Hey everyone, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews and our special episode this time. This is going to blow all the other episodes out of the water. I'm super excited about this one because we have the developer from MK Watch Faces joining us today. Michael, awesome. It's so nice to see you. He has such an awesome collection of watch faces. You have to check out his storefront. Of course, we're going to leave the full links after the review so you can check it out. Um, but Basically, this is going to be a new segment on the show, the, the interview component here, and really learn more about the developers that provide us with these awesome looking watch faces, learn a little bit more about their background, their personal taste, their inspirations, and even later on, stick around because we have a surprise coming up that we're going to show you a brand new release that Michael's just uh, released inside the store and there's going to be a little surprise so you'll definitely want to stick around for that but let's kick off the interview with learning a little bit more about michael and, and your background and and where you're from so kick it off for us michael yeah so um thanks andrew it's it's really nice to be here and uh you asked about where i'm from well i come from a small island uh in greece called corfu it's kind of a, a touristic destination so it's uh, a little bit more famous uh, but for the last 10 years, I have moved and I'm currently living in Bratislava. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm from. Nice. And then in terms of your, your background, like what what brought you into this world of designing watch faces? Like, did you already have a technical background of this? Did you did you take any courses? How did that come about? Yeah, well, I did have a technical background, but uh, my education basically is not related to graphics design. But as long as I remember, I was always drawn into that direction, into that area. So um, even before doing watch spaces, I was uh, doing photo manipulation or I was always working with, uh, uh, yeah. with uh, graphics design tools and, and Photoshop and Illustrator. But I started as a hobbyist photographer then um, with photography comes the post-processing so i learned a lot about lighting composition etc etc so um i i'm now using all these skills um to build watch faces for samsung very nice so when you're coming up with the design like what what inspires you to create that design is there is there anything in particular like maybe from, from your background, whether it be your, your technical or maybe experiences as a kid even. Like I remember my dad having all kinds of watches and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like, where do you draw this inspiration from for your own designs? Well, the inspiration mainly comes from real watches. So I'll, I'll spend some time, right? Review the trends, new models, uh, what people like. And, and then as soon as I pick some, I'll start drawing on paper different versions of, mm -hmm. of that watch face, adding as well my own imagination and, and my own personal touch into that. I'll draw different versions. And as soon as I have something solid that I believe that it represents the brand, then I'll put the design on the computer and, and start designing. Now, just out of curiosity, is there any kind of, uh, is there any brand in particular that you that you really like in the real watch world? Like, a, I'm always curious with these two worlds that kind of like collide, right? The, the digital and the physical, but is there one particular brand that you kind of draw that inspiration from? Not really. Well, it, it depends on what I really want to design. So mm. if, if I want to design something classic, yeah, then I'll look uh, in, into a more classic, let's say, brands. Uh, okay. but, but if I want to design something which is fully digital, right, or sport related, then I'll look into GSOC or something else. Okay. And talking about brands, obviously building your own brand, uh, the MK Watch Faces brand, when did you actually start that journey for yourself when when did it kind of come all together i think it started in end of november 2019 so i'm kind of a fairly new developer into this area and designer into this area and uh, as i believe that many of us the the story is that i got the galaxy watch for my birthday uh, <laughs> immediately as i got it right i i entered the samsung galaxy store i saw hundreds of thousands of, of, of watch faces and then it just clicked that you know hey this is something that I can do too and um, it's it's uh, it started at November 2019 my first sale was in December the 4th um, I remember this as as today basically 
and ever since uh, I'm releasing approximately two watch faces per month so the frequency is not so high but I solely focus into um, the quality of that watch face. Right. Yeah, I, I can definitely relate there because I, all of this kind of started as well from <laughs> a birthday gift uh, from my yeah. wife. So uh, it's funny like how we get started on things and the journey that it takes us along. And, uh, you know, she's always saying, you can thank me whenever you like, every day is fine. <laughs> um, I don't want to do that every day. But <laughs> anyways, I will acknowledge that she does have a small part of the success. And I'm sure you're, you are the same thinking as that as well. Um, another question. So talking about the, the designs that you create, is there any particular uh, format that you like and, or style like a digital versus analog or like what, what is your preference or you don't really have one or where does that come from? I do, I do. And, um, I think that I really enjoy designing hybrid watch faces. I believe that it, it brings uh, the best from both worlds, analog and digital. Now, they're a little bit more complex to design, but um, uh, if you check my, um, my, my library and my collection, you will find that I do have solely analog and fully digital designs as well. So although I do like the hybrid, of course, I design as well um, analog or digital right yeah no you definitely have like a good like diverse variety of different styles to choose from like that that's what i like as well because you really can't go wrong right it, it doesn't matter if it's a digital that you do or or a hybrid it's going to be a fresh design and it, it doesn't really matter what the format is but you offer such a broad range of uh, designs for your lineup it's really it's really amazing um, and I think that uh, it's also the target group that you're targeting with each watch face. So right. I, I don't want the MK watch face brand to be only um, addressing people that are doing sport or only addressing businessmen, for example, in business meetings. So uh, in, in my tryout to address as bigger target group as I can, then of course this diversity is really required. Right, right. And I think that makes sense, too, because even in the real watch world, I mean, people have all kinds of watches, right? They have ones that they wear for just formal events. They have ones that are kind of more sporty style. So, I mean, that's real life, right? We don't all yeah. stick with one particular design. And that's the nice thing that you do have those options, the flexibility to change it up based on your occasion or situation, right? So talking about, I guess, the designs, uh, that you create i mean what is the what is your most popular what is the most downloaded designs that that you have in the app store um i think that it would really depend on which period we we are reviewing this and we are watching this but the latest most popular watch face is the mk25 venture it uh, okay. has a really uh, unique it, it is a really unique animated watch face it has its own character, it has a great set of features and uh, I've built into it a really very high detailed animation of the moon that it's also representing the moon face. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the latest, let's say, watch face, which is now very popular. But if I look at it in, in the long term, uh, the best seller from my collection is the MK14 Rapid. And um, that's that's another watch face that uh, you have reviewed. Uh, you have reviewed as well. Yes. Yeah. And uh, if if you remember, it's uh, parted from two digital screens with ability to change colors on each screen independently. Right. It has tons of features. It has an app drawer. So I think uh, that uh, that is the top uh, watch face from my collection and the best seller. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And like I said, to everybody out there, we're going to have a, a surprise a little bit later on coming very soon where we're going to show a brand new watch face that Michael's been working on. So I'm really excited to show you guys that. Um, so stick around, of course. Now, going back again to the design, what, what are, would you say are your like key aspects that, that you take into consideration when you're designing a watch face? What are those main points that you want to really hammer in there in that design? I think I have three pillars that I'm taking into consideration um, on every watch face that I design. And these are 
the design, of course, itself, the functionality and innovation. And in terms of design, I believe that uh, my designs are distinctive and really linked to the MK watch face brand. So uh, we, we were speaking before about the target group and uh, the target group is, is really big and opinions may vary. So likability is a really subjective um, area. But um, if you look into my collection, you won't find uh, two watch faces that are alike. So each watch face is unique and it has its, its own character and is designed completely from scratch. So I'm not using the same assets in, uh, in, in two watch, watch faces. Now, in terms of functionality, which is really linked as well with the design, because in my design process, um, I, I mentioned before that I will draw the watch face on paper, but that's exactly the time that I'm also starting to think about its functionality. Mm. And by functionality, I don't mean only where we will place the data and where the steps will appear and where the distance will appear, but right. um, we, we must not forget that uh, the Samsung watches are first watches and they need to tell the time. So if you start adding data, uh, because it has many features, but if you start adding data, then you will end up with a very complex and, and very overwhelming design. So um, I've seen other watch faces in the store and many of them, they, they have icons to show um, to the people that if you double click in this area, right, a certain app will open. Now, um, what I'm trying to do is to create a more simple, let's say, design with, uh, with uh, a lot of clarity, yeah? So what I'm kind of doing is that I'm trying to find other ways uh, to show to the people where the shortcuts are, for example, but without having the icon visible at all times. So I'm trying to create uncluttered designs. Yes. Which brings me to the third pillar, which is the innovation. So. When I'm building a, a watch face, uh, I'm using several techniques to achieve and address several problems. I would say that I have seen that people may have. So I'm using techniques such as tap to reveal, and this is a technique that um, uh, you have as well reviewed many of watch faces that have this functionality. And uh, the tap to reveal is a technique that can hide or show data on a watch face. That means that um, you basically start with a very simple analog design, even classic, but then with a few taps, you can really turn it into something sporty looking and, and very complex watch space. Um, then another, uh, another, let's say, innovation that I have brought and I have been working on is the GA color mode. So uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, I was also purchasing and downloading watch spaces from other developers and many of them have ability to change colors. Many of them have so many colors as well to <laughs> choose from, <laughs> it's pretty overwhelming. Now, sure. um, what I tried to do is to go a, a step further. So instead of just double tapping and changing a color, I've built a functionality into my watch faces that it's using values from the gyroscope to blend the colors. So I'm, I'm predefined, I use two predefined colors and as you move your wrist, as you walk, as you exercise, then these two colors are blending to each other. Now, choosing two complementary colors will create a smooth effect, but choosing two opposite colors, it will create a dynamic effect, I would say. Mm. So this is what I like to use as well more. Now, um, I mentioned before that, uh, yeah, many of the wall spaces have really a lot of color choices. And um, I've seen watch faces with 20, 30 colors to choose from. Sure, and yeah. it, it, it was happening to me that uh, I shuffle through the colors, I find something that I like, then I quickly tap or double tap and I'm over it. So then I have to go another 20 or 30 colors to find again the one that I really like. Just so endless the, cycle of colors, just keep going through them all. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so the way that I have found to address this is by implementing a feature called next color. So for every color that you have, the watch face will tell you what will be the next if you double tap. Right, so this, like this a preview, will give, right. Yes, exactly. So 
this will give you an indication of what's the next color. If you like it, you double tap. If you don't, you stay where you are. But you don't have to shuffle again through um, many, many colors to, to find the one you like. Right. And lately, um, I have been, I mentioned that I'm working more with hybrid watch faces. So hybrid watch faces are those that have a digital panel or a digital screen. One of the really nice features that I um, implemented is the auto light up mode. And this one is using, again, values from the gyroscope, but this time is not to blend colors, but actually to switch on or off your digital screen. So when you're raising your wrist, your screen turns on and um, allows you to see the data on the screen. But when you're lowering your wrist, your wrist and you don't need to focus on that screen, that screen right. turns turns off, and it's it's like the uh, the light function in a traditional watch. Remember, um, yep. always the inspiration is the traditional watch. So I'm I'm trying as much as I can to simulate the functions as well from traditional watches to these watch faces. And um, lately, in my digital lineup for the Samsung uh, Galaxy Active and Active Two. I implemented a feature that all of us we have seen as well in computers and in operating systems. So the latest operating systems are giving a choice to the user to have a light or a dark theme. Mm, and right. I brought this into uh, my watch face design. So either it will be automatic. So after a certain time, uh, the theme will change to dark, enabling, uh, uh, let's say, easier visibility of the data and throughout the day it will be bright or uh, the user will have the chance to choose on their on their own what they really like very nice that's very cool yeah so so these are some some of the features and the functionality and the innovations that i try to bring um, in, in those watch faces so for every design that i start to make I need, in, uh, I need to understand and um, choose which of this functionality will end up into, into the right. design. And I think so far it has worked pretty good because um, we, have a, or we have a quite good rating. So we are at uh, 4.9 out of five. Wow, that's really good. Congratulations, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, I think Thanks. like something like that you mentioned from that too, and it's something that I've, I even tell new developers too, is, you know, just because the watch can do, you know, a hundred different functions, you don't need to put a <laughs> hundred different functions into every design, right? Like you have your toolbox there, but you, you never pull out all the tools at once, right? You pull out yeah. the tool that makes sense for the job that you're doing. So exactly. if the design is based, you know, around this style or this theme, then I only need these couple of tools. I don't need to literally bring everything out for that job. So I think what you're saying there as well, like really resonates and I, and, you know, hopefully new developers out there will take that to heart too, that, you know, just because you have all this functionality, don't throw it into every design, focus on that theme or that style and only bring in the pieces that you need, because otherwise it just becomes overly cluttered and people get lost and the theme also gets lost, you know, like what are we actually trying to accomplish here? So I think that's that's awesome. That's some really good points. Um, so if people want to like contact you and learn more about, you know, your your designs and about uh, the brand that you're building here, how, how can they find you? Well, um, I think you can agree that um, nowadays the people don't really have a lot of time. Of course, we, yeah. we do have uh, let's say methods of communication and I do have methods of communication. It can be either through my uh, Facebook page or my website or even through the, the Galaxy store. Uh, always my email is there. Uh, I do have a Twitter account, a Reddit account. So MK Watchface is literally everywhere. But, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's what but, we like, uh, yeah. But, but uh, I think that um, the, the best thing that I have done into this area is that people don't really need to find me. I will. So if the people um, visit my website and they subscribe to my emailing service or even to web push notifications, right? They will be informed for every latest release, every coupon giveaway that yeah. we may have in the future. 
So they don't really need to be following up on a, on a close basis, let's say um, closely every day, but uh, they, be, they, they need to be sure that uh, they will get the information when they need to. Right. Awesome. And just so everybody knows, we're going to be including all Michael's links down below in our video description. So uh, after this uh, video, then make sure you check it out and you can definitely get all that information and more uh, about his, uh, his brand and how you can follow him. So that's awesome. So now we're coming to the really special, exciting part for all the viewers as well, because I told you guys that we're going to be uh, giving you like a sneak peek of a brand new release that Michael's been working on and uh, and, and, and I've downloaded it right there. <laughs> so I've been wearing it and it's it's an awesome design. So I'm really excited to to uh, show this to all the viewers out there. And uh, I'm going to show a, we're going to run a video, of course, just kind of a little review while uh, I'm going to let Michael actually, because I always do the reviews and the descriptions and tell you guys about the themes and the customizations. But who even better than <laughs> than me? But but Michael himself is going to give you kind of a little bit of a talk down about this design of, you know, what that inspiration was for to come up with this design and the features and everything else he's built into it. So Michael, like, tell us, we're so excited to see this new design. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, thanks. I'm also excited and I definitely have a surprise for you here because this watch face that you're going to see and we're going to describe has just released in the Galaxy App Store. So this awesome. is really an exclusive. No one else has seen it before apart <laughs> from me <laughs> awesome. and, and Andrew as well, you, right? But uh, this time it is a an analog animated watch face called MK26 Atom. And as all the other watch faces from MK Watch Face, it has a really nice set of features. So it has these three um, very nice dials and complications uh, on the top, left and bottom area. Uh, the top one displays your uh, actual count, steps count and the steps progress. Uh, on the left side, you can find your last recorded heart rate and the bottom one displays your uh, remaining power. Now. In the middle, you can see that there is a, um, a middle area where the animation plays. And about that animation, um, I think that this watch face has a really non-destructive non animation. So it's pretty slow. It's even relaxing, if I would, uh, <laughs> if I would be yes. allowed to say. Yeah, you know, many watch faces, many animated watch faces are focusing into fast animations, which I believe that they can draw attention from the data. But because this watch face was built with simplicity in mind, I didn't want a very destructive animation. So you still look into it and you can still read very easily the data. And I've tested that while driving, while exercising. So if you just get a quick glimpse of your watch, then you will barely notice that something is moving there. But if you're one of those uh, that are staring into the watch for, for quite some time, then this animation is really nice to have. Of course, it can be hidden by double tapping at uh, nine. You can change that animation and, and replace it by static images. And I have included 16 different colors and six different patterns for that area of the watch face. And as well, I have included several textures for uh, the area around the animation. And uh, it wouldn't be an MK watch face watch if it didn't have enough drawer. So by tapping on, on yeah. 12, where you see those three lines, then it will bring up your app drawer, which will notify where the shortcuts are and where you need to double tap in order to switch colors and textures. That's super helpful. I, I love that you build that, um, that reveal and hide kind of menu in because you know, especially with watch faces that again, people put a lot of functionality and then you're like, I can't remember where this was, where was it over in the three position? Was it down in the six position? I don't know. And then you get lost. So it's so handy just to have a little menu that you can just pop up at any time and just see exactly where those shortcuts are or, or to change those backgrounds and the colors and textures and all that. So that's such like a nice feature that you build into the watches. And it's especially when you have that level of functionality, it's super important to have that. It's, it's amazing. Awesome. 
All right, and we also have another special kind of experience here because not only has Michael just shown us this this brand new release, but Michael, why don't take it away? What else are we going to do with this one? <laughs> well, we are going to give it away. So um, available at this time, you have 50 coupons per country for you to download MK26 Atom. Awesome. So everybody hear that? The link is going to be down in the uh, video description. Of course, these are limited codes as always. Uh, so first come, first serve, but uh, but make sure that you, you try and get your hand on this because this is a beauty one to have to your collections. Just the level of detail, the functionality and everything else. So uh, thank you so much, Michael, for, for giving us this, uh, <laughs> this goodie to the channel. Again, you've been very generous uh, with your support of the channel and the viewers so we really appreciate it and it was awesome speaking to you about design as well so thank you so much <laughs> thank you and and from my side adrio i i'd like to thank you because um in reality jibber job reviews have done a lot for my brand as well so um this this visibility that you have brought to my brand and to my watch faces and my designs have been um really required i would say for for each developer out there and especially if uh, you're a new developer contact andrew right <laughs> uh, <laughs> contact jibber Dev reviews because it's uh, uh, it's something else i'm telling you right. and um also <laughs> and also i'd like to thank the viewers as well you are yeah. the ones that are downloading this watch faces you are the ones that are providing feedback and and uh, feedback it's something that I um, look in in a daily basis so I'm always trying to address as I mentioned before um, visit our website and and subscribe to the, the mailing service I'll make sure that you are informed for every giveaway that uh, that uh, will be in the future or every new content that MK Watch Face releases and yeah thank you very much yeah, I just want to add on to that as well because people, yeah, they viewers always leave comments here, and I want the viewers to know that developers actually read the comments, guys. <laughs> you know, they they put suggestions down, they put feedback down, and and so having YouTube like this is is a great uh, medium for them to express the that feedback. So yes, the developers do actually read comments, guys. So you can leave them below, but of course, absolutely reach out to Michael if you have any any questions. So. Thank you once again, Michael, for, for sharing your designs with us, your time, and just letting us know a little bit more about you. Uh, really appreciate it. And of course, we'll have future reviews of Michael's designs coming out in a future date. So thank you, Michael, once again. Thank you. Nice All to right, be here. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks again for watching our review, and if you liked it, then show us some love with a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with your friends because with your support, it really helps me keep the channel going so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways, and of course, fresh content. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.